Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. Uh, my website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube, if you're new, my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. That's my backup channel. All right, so we're gonna just continue here. We're gonna go into the economy and finish off with some pretty, I would have to admit, creepy eugenics. So, analyst says U.S. inequality greater than in third world countries. And you're also seeing the health and well-being of a lot of American states start to go down pretty significantly. If this problem isn't dealt with soon, I think you'll continue to see a stagnation in our economy and our health, i.e. dying off. Well, they look at us as useless eaters, so that's what they want. It says when you have a massive gap between the richest, you know 1% of the poor and 1% of everyone else, you see uh, social welfare for the rest of the population steadily decline as the inequality persists. Then the wealth gap between the richest Americans and the typical family more than doubled over the past 50 years, according to the new report. In 62, 1962, top 1% had 125 times the net worth of the medium household that shot up to 288 times the net worth of the medium household uh, by 2010. It says not only are the rich getting richer, but the middle class are also getting poorer. Most Americans below the upper echelon have suffered a decline in wealth in recent decades. The medium household saw its net worth drop to $57,000 in 2010, down from $73,000 in 1983. It would have been 119000 had wealth grown equally across households. But it says the top 1%, on the other hand, saw the average wealth grow to $16.4 million, up from $9.6 million in 1983. This is due in large part to the growing income and equality divide, as well as the sharp rise in value of stocks over the period. So, you ever see the, the company men, the corporate men? Um, check that out with Ben Affleck and um, Tommy Lee Jones. And um, it's a pretty good movie. And it just goes to show you what they do to keep those stocks going. Uh, <laughs> you know, they don't actually do things like they stop for actually producing and manufacturing physical, tangible things. They were just moving numbers around and pushing buttons basically firing people and get, having to come up with bs reasons to do it um and that's to keep their stock up and then what happened you know uh craig t nelson that was the that was like the ceo they ended up getting like a huge office like a big freaking office um but uh, this is this is what I, this is the point i want to make about this it's interesting that they say that even those that they consider millionaires have actually um, lost their net worth. I mean, that's a significant amount. Um, 73,000, uh, 57,000. Uh, so, you know, when you see these articles about the rich, the rich, they're usually, when you talk about taxes and safe havens and stuff like that, they're attacking millionaires. Those are the guys that actually, and women that actually provide jobs in your local area. Those guys. Um, and those are the people you don't want to attack. Yet, see, they're the ones that are getting attacked by the super rich who are just gobbling them up like sharks. Those are the ones that we're talking about, and we'll get into that right here in a minute. The world is moving through a great transition. Well, this is what the Ban Ki-moon of the United Nations is saying. Well, he's damn right about that, right? He goes on to talk about it as um, he's talking about a transition uh, from basically the west to the east, uh, balancing it out. Right. Today's engines of growth are largely in the developing world. Korea itself hosted the G20 and is first to be held outside the North America and Europe. So it talks about implications of a momentous shift from west to east. So see, saying what I'm saying. And from north uh, to global south and only beginning to unfold. So it says it's also developmental and we seek a more sustainable path. That means... Um, making sure uh, you don't procreate or reducing the, the population and stuff like that. I'm all for it happening naturally, but what they're doing is are totally artificial So, because they despise you because you have, uh, in numbers, you have power, and they don't want that. So it says the social perils of rising inequality and joblessness are clear. So in our, <laughs> in our ecological footprint, the CO2 is overstepping the Earth's boundaries. Again, more BS, right? And what are they going to do about this? They're going to they're going to squash out the millionaires. They're going to squash out the smaller guys. Do you think they're going to go after the trillionaires and billionaires? No, they help create this world governing body, the Rothschilds and all these guys. 
the Warburgs and all that, you know? They created this, this whole system. It's, it's beautiful. They're not going to get squeezed out of this. This is the whole damn point. So when they're talking about CO2 and stuff like that, uh, overstepping the boundaries, you know, they're talking about reducing their carbon footprint. The, you know, all these big companies, they're going to just pass off, offset that cost onto the customers who are going to end up having to freeze in the middle of the winter, right? And in the name of saving the planet, they won't be able to burn firewood like they are in some places in the United States and other places, other countries. And of course, they're going to track you with the smart meters, right? So our economic ruin means freedom for the super rich. So Cameron and Osborne's neoliberal agenda... God, isn't it just so funny? You call it, what, uh, uh, Fabian socialist agenda? Uh, promise prosperity for all, but created a totalitarian capitalism that feeds on the crisis. Well, no shit, Sherlock. That's what it's designed to do. It's called the money lenders, right? Now he goes on and he says that um, they've been stashing in unregulated tax havens, right? Austerity programs are extending the crisis they were meant to solve. Well, they weren't really meant to solve that. Uh, is to uh, shore up capital and reduce expenditures so that they can borrow more and more and more from people who aren't even born yet and spending it on all kinds of little uh, pet projects of the elites. Yet governments refuse to abandon them because it's a good business. The rise of the new global elite. These are all articles that I've been seeing lately. Let's get, a, let's get a, some dates here. This is uh, July 2012. Then you got the rise of the new global elite going on. And uh, what's the date here? January, February 2011. So he goes, today's super rich are also different from yesterday's, more hardworking and uh, meritocratic, whatever, <laughs> but less connected to the nations that granted them opportunity and countrymen. They are leaving ever further behind. Well, that's, that's the whole point of this Brave New World is that they don't have any attachments to nationalism, right? Uh, they, they help create this kind of uh, nationalist idea and then they, then they turn it and squash it on its head. And these guys, these travelers, these uh, technocrats or nomads, will, you know, they're going to have homes on and, and their own private states all around the country, you know. Actually, all around the world is what they meant to say. You know, they'll have a condo in uh, Manhattan, and then they'll have, like, a country house in South Africa or something like that, you know. And they'll always be traveling. The rise of the super rich, the top 1%, Americans are getting a bigger piece of the economic pie and part of the reason maybe Republicans in Congress, <laughs> according to new studies, you'll see it's the neoliberals, it's the Republicans, and, uh, you know, it's just the nonsense goes on and on. This is from October 27th, 2012. The rise of the super rich isn't just a U.S. phenomenon, so, yeah, there you go. I see, it's just, it, it's, it's really mind-numbing when I'm reading it here, because I know that most of my audience uh, is just like, you know, you're just like shaking your heads, you know, it's just... People, they, they, they eat this up. They consume this information uh, like, like it's truth. The growing gap between the 1% and the rest of the U.S. population has emerged as a major issue in this year's presidential campaign. But they go on to say it's not likely to narrow much uh, no matter who wins. So, and they're talking about this book, Pluto, uh, Plutocrats, The Rise of the New Global Super Rich and the Fall of Everyone Else. Then Europe unemployment will become unmanageable, says expert. According to economists, no jobs are beginning to be created in the Eurozone, and instead jobs are being destroyed, which will lead to unemployment to an unmanageable situation. About, they're talking about permanent unemployment, i.e. Uh, useless eaters. All right, so kind of finishing up here, but we're still in immigration and employment. Uh, most of you probably saw this today. Sweden pays jobless youth to move to Norway. Swedish town has taken... Uh, to paying people to look for work in Norway in an attempt to reduce soaring youth unemployment. So it's kind of like the homeless, right? The way to fix the homeless problem is just to send them somewhere else. So it says, going to Norway to find work has always been quite popular with young people. And sometimes they want to go, but don't know how to find a job or accommodation, so we would give them a bit of help with both. He uses this uh, example. After two years on the dole in his hometown, this Andreas Larsen opted for a job journey to Norway and now works as a lorry driver in Oslo. He said it felt unreal as if you become to the promised land because he got a job so fast. So that's kind of how it was for the Mexicans, but not like that anymore um, as far as them flocking to the U.S. for jobs. It's just like everything else, especially in England, um, where your own people don't have jobs and yet you keep 
opening the gates of Im to immigration, right? And they say, oh, we do it because we don't have the expertise, right? So all that money they are spending on killing people with drones and spending it on uh, forced abortion policies and and paying for corporations to set up overseas like Chrysler and that, um, they could spend it on subsidized programs, right, to actually train people of all walks of life. You know, usually it'll be like the lower middle class um, and poor and stuff like that. If they're smart enough, you know, and they can compete, they can get some kind of type scholarship that, so they can get the skills that they need to help the quote, country. Uh, but no, they like to import them. In fact, they like to have the people, like here in America, train their Chinese counterparts for the job that they're going to be uh, fired from. So they're going to get fired and let go, and they're going to train the Chinese guy who doesn't have the skills to do it. So there goes that whole rationale down the tubes of lack of skills. Illegal immigrants to get new rights in Sweden. So this is from 2011. I found it. But illegal immigrants in Sweden should in the future have the right to government-funded health care, education, be able to start their own companies the government has charged. So I said Sweden is one of the most diverse countries. Um, they're also a pro-feminist. And they're actually pushing the, um, the whole LGBT thing, but also tran uh, transgender or whatever. Um, as far as the he and she, they were trying to do away with that in the schools. Um, so you can call a boy or girl or he or she and stuff like that. So real big on uh, social, social engineering. A health study says diversity may be fatal in the United States. Diversity may be killing older African Americans and Hispanics, according to a new peer-reviewed study. Shows that people suffer less cancer and heart disease when they are living among their racial or ethnic peers. So says living in an ethnically dense neighborhood is beneficial when it comes to heart disease and cancer. Many progressive groups advocate the use of government to increase diversity in housing, education, health care, and other sectors. Says Alvarez's study reviewed that uh, 2,367 Mexican-Americans and 2,700 African-Americans older than 65 and concluded that they live longer if they inhabited a community mostly populated by their group. So Becca Levy, a study co-author, says the reduced death rate in ethnically dense neighborhoods may occur because similar neighbors are likely to share values like respect for elders and have close-knit family structures. So CDC says the U.S. birth rate hits an all-time low, 47% of babies born to unmarried women. And then you have propaganda uh, on the television, like the show The New Normal and that show The Girls, telling them that this is normal now. So remember, I was just talking about genetic um, discrimination. And uh, this article, school kicks out boy for having cystic fibrosis gene. Court may force mentally disabled Nevada woman to have an abortion. So it says here that uh, the judge will consider whether or not uh, to order the woman to undergo an abortion or sterilization against her will. So again, uh, you know, you say, oh, well, she shouldn't have this. Well, if there was family structure and stuff like that, then it would be fine. There would be people that would take care of her. But the way the government sees it is everybody's on their own. And this person is a defect, right? They won't be a valuable member of the society, i.e. a good human resource worker. San Bernardino, Comptons are stopped paying state pensions. So, yep, they actually stopped uh, paying people's pensions out there in California. Retired people should be forced to work for charity or lose pension. So the pensioners groups have hit out against Lord Burchard after he came up with a scheme to stop old people from becoming a burden of the state. There you go, no joke. 3,000 doctors putting patients on death list that single them out to be allowed to die from the 17th. So thousands of patients have already been placed on death registers which single them out to be allowed to die in comfort rather than be giving life-saving treatment in the hospital. Top doctors chilling claim that NHS kills off 130,000 elderly patients every year to use a death pathway to euthanize the elderly. A district nurse put a 90-year-old father on Liverpool death pathway in his own home without consulting his family, given sedatives by the nurse to calm him and reassured family that it would not make him sleepy. Next day, they were unable to wake him, give him food, and he fell into a coma. So they want all those people to die, useless eaters, but they want to live forever. Scientists are now working to make humans immortal. That's the elites, the super elites, not you. Which is why you have this. Is young blood the fountain of youth? And I'm sure most of you are aware of the blood sacrifice rituals that most likely take place in all these bloodlines and families and stuff like that. But you got this Nigerian using juju 
witchcraft rituals to terrorize young orphans that they're smuggling them into Britain. That fear, of course, is what transferred into the blood, which is consumed by the elites. Thank you.